When this biofutum sensitivum arrived, I discovered a little hitchhiker. So, this is Fred. Say hello. He is a millipede. If I identified him correctly, he is Aoxidus gracilis. He is also called the greenhouse millipede, because I often hitchhike in various plants and spread around the world this way. I don't want to release him outside, as he wouldn't survive the cold temperatures here in my country. And it is also an invasive species. As a detrivore, he wouldn't do too much harm to the environment, but it is never good to release alien species into the wild, as they could potentially outcompete the native fauna. Look at this little invasive cutie. I love him. So I will make Fred his own terrarium in this jar. It can be closed airtight to ensure a high humidity, which is very important for millipedes. Let's start with the drainage layer. Therefore I just used some clay balls. I covered the clay balls with aqua soil. This prevents the substrate from falling between the clay balls and also provides a lot of nutrients for a long time, because the aqua soil sheds its nutrients very slowly. The main substrate I put on top is a mixture of sphagnum moss, cocoa core, cocoa chips and worm castings. I also added some gravel to this mixture and created a slope in the back of the jar for the effect of depth. This will also increase the surface area and thus the amount of plants that can be added. This is a dragonstone that I will use as a centerpiece. With this dragonstone I was able to fixate the substrate in the back. The stone also provides Fred with a dry surface. Some isopods need this, so maybe he does too. Millipedes can often be found underneath moss and bark, so I added lots of moss and some wood to this terrarium. The moss does a great job covering the substrate in the back and can easily be placed around the stone. Now for the foreground. This piece of wood that is partially covered in moss serves as a food source for Fred. In the future I will also give him various types of vegetables to eat. I also covered the rest of the ground with moss. This coffee plant will add a little bit of shade to the ground. I removed the substrate and separated the different plants so I can plant them in the jar. Three individual plants on each side of the stone just fit perfectly. They will grow too big eventually, but so far things are looking pretty good I think. The shadows I am providing will hopefully lead to an increased activity of red, as millipedes often don't like being in bright light. I also added some Fetonia and Syllaginella to get more plants on the ground. The spark has a very interesting structure. I hope Fred likes it too. I don't want him to be lonely, so I also added some orange springtails. Like Fred, they also feed on decaying matter, so they help reduce the risk of mold. A few cuttings of Solarolia Solaroli I placed in various spots in the jar completed the build. Now it is time for the star of this video, Fred. He carefully entered his new home.
I expected him to bury himself immediately, but he was walking around a bit first. He didn't seem as shy as I thought. For the duration of this build I kept him in a small lunchbox with some wet sphagnum moss. He seems fine and active. His color is relatively dark, so I suspect he is a slightly older millipede. I love how he walks. Look at his legs. They look like small waves. After a while he decided to bury himself under this piece of moss. To finish the terrarium I added a little bit of water and cleaned the jar with a wet paper towel so I can close it. And hey, Fred actually came out again to say hello, cute little guy. He is definitely out exploring his new home and looking under old pieces of bark and moss. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to see more of Fred and ecosystems in jars, consider subscribing. Fred and I are wishing you a great day.